Metallica's in the news again. Oh, okay. You know what's this time? No, I don't. So, uh, James Hetfield said that individually, they're not great musicians. Welcome to another episode from Takedowns to Breakdowns with a and and we're here once again to go through a little bit of the stories of the week. And there's been quite a few, some good, some bad, and some, eh, kind of like, I don't know. It could go either way. Okay. It could go either way. Let me start off with a, with a really sad story. Blaze Billy had a heart attack, uh, a stroke to be precise. He had to cancel his tour. I mean, I'm sure that's the least of his concerns. Yeah. We actually got to see Blaze Bailey perform at uh, Dark River Festival when we were there in 2019. Uh, a solid dude, and and always sad to hear these kind of stories. And to, I don't, you're too young, but for me, it kind of reminds me of my own mortality. Like you know, I'm starting to get up in that age. My diet is not the greatest. My health habits. I don't. Let's face it. I don't have any health habits. I don't know, man. I start to feel like. Like, yeah, it could happen to the best of us, as it did. But, you yeah. know, like, I, I don't know. When I hear these stories, when I was your age, I was like, ah, fuck, another old guy that probably had it coming. But now that I'm one of those old guys, I'm like, fuck, man. I kind of have it coming. <sighs> yeah, it's it's <laughs> starting to, the, the, the doors are knocking, and, it, and one of these days is going to be mine that I open. I hope not. Knocking on wood, I hope not. But, um, you know, I, I wish him a speedy recovery. Uh, it, it's, it's definitely something that, uh, you know, it, it comes unexpectedly. That's that's kind of how it goes. And I just wish him a speedy recovery, and I wish him all the best, and that he gets back playing concerts and touring, which is something that I know he absolutely loves and adores. So I just want to give him a shout out as the start of this video before we go absolutely off the rails. Yeah. Now I'm leaving a good story to finish off because since we're fin we're starting this video on such a sour note. Uh, I, I'm leaving a good, happy story for the end of this video. So, sorry, no, but good thoughts in our heads. Exactly. And prayers. Exactly. So, I'm leaving something really good for the end, but in between, uh, Metallica's in the news again. Oh, okay. You know what's this time? No, I don't. So, uh, James Hetfield said that individually, they're not great musicians. I don't know. How do you feel about that? Okay, so he's... I don't know if he's implying that together as a band we're... We're rock solid. But, I was about to say. But I don't. I don't. I don't know. But at least he said that individually, they're average musicians or something along those lines. Um. I don't know how. To, I don't know how to. I don't know how to attack that statement. I mean, I would disagree. At least on Rob Trujillo's front, I think he's one of the greatest bass players of all time. I mean, if he's talking about himself, Kirk and and Lars. Maybe. Okay. I mean, I'm not going to argue against it, but. Rob? I mean, if there's one thing Metallica's had over the years is outstanding bass players. From Cliff Burton to now, I mean, they've gone through three. So all, all three of them have been outstanding. Outstanding. I mean, you could almost make the argument that they've that's been their strongest point. That's been their strongest pillar, if you will. Um, so I don't know if that statement, based on that alone, I don't know if that statement is accurate. Um, and I, I don't think James Hetfield is an average player. He's not a virtuoso, but I don't think he's trying to be one either. So. I don't think he's an average player, though. I think the only average player in Metallica is Lars. Well, he's the drummer. Okay, so? The, I mean... But he's not a very good drummer. He's an average drummer. That's what I'm saying. Like He's the drummer of a band where you don't really... He's the weakest link, dude. But it's because he's the drummer. I mean, you can't. It's really not because he's the drummer. It's because he's the weakest link. I mean, yeah. I'm. I'm not saying all drummers because there are drummers. Uh, Fuck, there's a lot of phenomenal there's drummers out there. A lot of phenomenal there. drummers out there. But the the bands that they're in are able to show off why they're good drummers. Metallica doesn't really do that for him, right? Maybe I don't think here he could and do there. That either. Maybe here and there. But yeah, I don't even think he could. Like to be honest, he's he's a drummer who's playing with like literally the biggest band of all time. Wow, do you, you really, I, I'm not disagreeing with you, but I'm just, you, that's a big statement. Do you, you feel like Metallica, uh, in, in terms of rock, metal, music? They, come on. I don't know if band of all time, but because I think the Beatles are probably the biggest okay, band okay, of sorry, all time. Metal related but, band of all time. I don't disagree with that statement. They're the biggest, they're the biggest I don't one. The biggest selling one for sure. Of course. Who else charges seven grand for a VIP? And actually gets sales. Exactly. So, 
he's the drummer for literally the biggest metal band of all time. So obviously he's going to get attention here and there. But if you place him against any drummer that, for a band that's not as big or even a band even smaller is not as big, they, they'd, they'd wipe the floor with him. I agree with that. I, I think comparatively he's not the best drummer. Even as a lead guitarist, Kirk Hammett, I think there's a lot better guys out there. Yeah, but I mean, I, I'm not saying he's bad. I'm just saying he's not average. But he's not average. I agree. I think he's out of all of them, he's when, when Jim is saying that stuff, I feel like he's only talking about Lars <laughs> because and maybe himself. Maybe he doesn't see himself as a but, great player. But I do. I do see himself. But as, I think he is. When it comes to vocals, and uh, he's not average. No, no, he's not average. He's, I, I, I've, I feel like I've we're, talked we're to measure, so many. We're measuring something else. But. I know, but I, I've talked to so many uh, musicians, specifically guitar players, and more often than not, when I ask them who their most uh, influential guitar players are James Edfield is on that list. It may not be you may not it's be not playing flashy, it, but exactly you may not be playing the flashiest riffs or or the most technical shit. But what you do works. So and he's good at it. And, and you're good at it. So you don't have to call yourself average just because of that. No, you do something that you're good at and that some people can't do. And even when they can do it, they can't do it as good as you. Yeah. So. I think really, like I said, the only average person in that band is, is Lars. Is Lars. Is Lars. And I don't think we're coming out of the... I don't think this I is a hot take. I, no, I don't think this I is think a hot take an, at I all. I think this is a known thing. That literally, if Metallica got a different drummer, I feel like the albums would be... Uh, if they made albums after adding a new drummer, they would have more drum... Um, quality? Flares and... Flair? And, and, okay, and flair. I, like, I like flair. And, I like and quality. Okay. Most definitely, they, they definitely would. So I think out of all of them, he is the only a- average one, right? But all of them are, are not average. They're they're very. Uh, they bring to the table what you not I only really would you, not only would you expect for them to bring, but they do it in a way where yeah, it can be duplicated, but not in the way that they do it. Like you, I, could, I think it was just kind of downplaying. Could, the He's band. being humble. Yeah, he was being humble <laughs> for a band that big to be humble. I don't know about that, I mean, I, but like. He came, he came across, I think that was the intention. Because I don't think that's an accurate statement. No. I don't think that's an accurate statement. Uh, on the news as well, so, you know, there's this show called The Voice. You yes. know, where, where people sing and then the chairs turn. Yeah, yeah, You know what I mean? People press the buzzer, the chairs turn and whatever. So there's one for Persia, which I was a little bit surprised. Because, I mean, Persia, that's a big area. Yeah. That's I, a I, big... It's weird why it would be called Voice Persia. I, I know. I, you would think it would be like, I don't know... Iran, Iraq, wh- whatever. Have their own but, but, yeah. but maybe they don't have the funding to have their individual ones. Or maybe so, some of the countries, uh, maybe they don't want to have their own one, so you just have one for the whole thing area. Of Persia, so the, the people from those countries that don't want to have, they can still... Or maybe some countries that couldn't have, then... Can that's what I'm saying. Anyways, so there's one it's for a Persia. Joint effort. So there's one for Persia. A deathcore vocalist won. Obviously not doing deathcore vocals, but I think what you what I took from that news is versatility. Yes, <laughs> for the people that say deathcore is cookie cutter, that vo- Bro, all they do, versatility. All, all they do is 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 pig squeals and this and that and that shit. This fucking guy goes on the on the voice. He beats everybody. He beats everybody. everybody. And, and, he's... and let's face it, the songs that they have to sing during those kind of competitions are really like. Pop songs. Yeah, it's not like it's well, not like it's he's doing crowd, the latest Lorna Shore it's, song. It's crowd pleasers. Yeah, because when you go there for your first audition, you get to pick whatever song you do. But after that point, the judges are the one picking songs for you. So it's not like he was doing the whole Pain Remains album from start to finish, and that's how he won. But it just goes to show you that within that genre, and in metal in general, but within that genre, there there's a vocals. lot of there's a lot of great vocalists with a lot of versatility. Exactly. I think Will Ramos is one of them. No, well, definitely, and Joe Bad. I, I, some of those guys are really at the top of their game, and they can't I, be touched. They can't be touched, honestly. Can they, they can, because they have the range of, of of being able to do whatever the fuck they want to do. And, and the band that they're in pleases the vocal, like the vocal approach to a T, right? If you don't, if you don't, if, Joe Bad, as good as a vocalist he is, if you don't have the guitars a fit for an autopsy, the drums a fit for an autopsy, just the overall experience the fit for an autopsy is, if you don't have that behind him, he's just a good vocalist with a subpar background. But I think they go hand in hand. It's just that the 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 technical stuff is able to lift up how good his vocals are. So do you think Joe or or, or Will Ramos could win The Voice? Ooh, 
Um, I mean, Joe probably... Joe, Joe's, I think both could. I think both could, because Joe has a good, like, clean... Because he, he has shown off his clean yeah. vocals before. I think he could he could enter, uh, maybe win, but I haven't heard enough of, like, pure clean vocals to get that across. I've only heard the clean vocals he's put into the songs, and those are mixed with harsh vocals, so it sounds even better. But I gotta hear him just sing a song with clean vocals to really get that. Like um, Sweet Home Alabama. Or Blue Hotel. Blue Hotel. I think Will Ramos could do it too. He did a cover of Sleep Token and I'm, I don't like Sleep Token even though I'm the singer of the band. Uh, but, uh, you know, he, he absolutely nailed it. He, he nailed my vocal range to a T. <laughs> By the way, I, I'm, I'm, I'm breaking news here. I, I am the lead singer of Sleep Token so now you guys know who's behind the mask. So anyways, he absolutely nailed it. Uh, I'm not putting him on the guest list on the next tour because, you know, I have a beef with him, so he's not on the guest list. <laughs> but anyhow, um, so he's shown his versatility as well. I just wonder if once they know who the person is, maybe in North America, if there would be a little bit of a bias from the, the judges or even the people or, or in general going forward. I think in some countries, in some parts of the world, maybe that bias is not as predominant. But yeah. I think when you're a good singer... I don't honestly. I don't think it matters what your background is in terms of of, of your America, music of choice. What's the problem in North America? Like you could, the imagine imagine there was like five. Uh, they they set the people in right to their to the after having the chairs turn around and everything right, and then they find out oh this guy's in like a deathcore band and then they listen to that they're gonna have a, a bias against him because they don't like that type of music, so why have him. And one, he's already in a band, so why have him go... I, I think there's also the thing with with guys like that. Do you? I mean, if you're in a deathcore band, but a deathcore band that's unsigned, I think that's a different story. When you're already in a band that's established, I think that's a little bit more of a gamble to go on, on a show like this. Obviously, this guy is in a band that I, I assume that not a lot of people know the band. Like, I was shocked with this news. But the thing that I really take away from it is the versatility of deathcore vocalists and the versatility of metal vocalists in general, specific vocalists that that, that are better known or, or, or more pigeonholed into that more uh, harsh vocals, grunting, pig squeals, that kind of stuff. To do those kind of vocal approaches, first of all, it's not easy to begin with. Yeah, people think it's easy, but it's, it's not it's, easy. It's not easy. It's not easy. That, like the stuff that you hear from some of these deathcore bands it's not easy to pull it off. Or even technical death metal bands, bands like Archspire or, or, or Inferi, where it's like like the vote, like so fucking fast. It's not easy to, to pull that off. So that tells you that they have an incredible ability. Now, do they have the range to go into a competition like that and win? That's a little bit of a different story. This guy obviously does. Obviously did, yeah. And he won. So I, I was blown away. I, I, I don't know if, if a lot of people know about this story, but I think this is a story that deserves some deserves attention. Some attention. Yeah, yeah. Fuck, this is fucking cool. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I, was, I was blown away by it. Let me just say that. I was blown away. I think away a lot of, just, not just deathcore and like people who do hard show, I think a lot of metal singers in general should start branching out to doing some of these. I think especially if you're in a band that nobody knows, like a local band, an unsigned band. What or signed better, to a small label. Like. But what better way to not only create publicity for yourself, but create publicity for, for your band? Because now, like, now people are going to look at that guy's Dude, band. People are going to go check out who the band is. They're going to listen to it on Spotify, whatever. You know what I mean? So uh, promote yourself. That's a great way of promoting yourself, of promoting yourself at a national level on yeah, TV. But you have to be good. <laughs> you can't just be uh, like uh, no. I mean, if you go there and you stink up the joint, there's also a chance that you're going to make it to the TV, but for all the wrong reasons. Yeah. And at that point, you're not really promoting anything. You're just you're, you're just a fucking Titanic. You're just sinking. you're just sinking the band. With you. <laughs> you're just sinking yourself and the band and everything by association. I, I think these three stories this week, in my humble opinion, I mean, a lot of things has been going on in the world uh, of metal. But I honestly feel like, uh, like these three stories had... Uh, a, a lot of different caveats to them, and that's why I wanted to discuss them with you. And to finish off this video, to finish off the, the news of the week, uh, Flori Jensen has announced that uh, she's expecting a baby. Oh, Second baby. Second baby. Yeah, a little Sabatonian Nightwish baby. <laughs> Man, those kids are going to have incredible genes. Oh, <laughs> shit. Imagine that shit. Yeah. Fuck, imagine your mother is Flor, your dad plays drums for, for Sabaton. Fuck! That kid is gonna come out with some camo pants, and then start 
I don't no, know. No, and drumming and singing. Oh, drumming, yeah. He's gonna, he, he's gonna be the, he's gonna start a band. It's gonna be the New Eagles. Fuck. I, I, I don't know, man. Uh, boy or girl, whatever. But fucking incredible, I mean, I mean, incredible gene pool. I was about to say, I think whatever music the child, both children decide to make, is just gonna be like godly. It, it, that's depending if they go into that. When the kids get a little bit older, they should do a a, a reboot of Mamas and the Papas. Oh. The two of them with the kids. Okay. The mama, the papa, and the children. Okay. Uh, like a reboot. I, I don't know. There's four of them. There's four of them. There's four of them. I, I just some 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 people are blessed. Let me just say that. Like I had a horrible gene pool to I, pull from. Like, why couldn't I be? My the... dad was bald. My mother is short, balding now as she's getting older. I, I mean, not the greatest when it comes to hygiene or health. Uh, fuck. I I honestly like I was really on the shallow end of the of the gene pool swimming. Or not even swimming. I was just kind of floating. Yeah. Uh, and, and then by association, you don't have much to pull from either. I don't and then these kids, look at these kids. Like, what? What's the best I got out of out of my situation? Height. Your height. I'm like I'm like six four and a half. Your height. That's, that's all it. I. Yeah, that's what I've got. That's all. That's all I've given you. You barely gave it to me. No, I give it to you because like I, I'm I'm the tall, one of the tallest people in my family. Yeah, but but my uh, my like great great uncle or whatever the fuck he was like seven four. From your mother's side. Yeah, so that's what I that's where I got a lot of. I'm the claiming too. the height. I'm okay. claiming the height. I'm not I'm not gonna claim the body hair because that's not something you want to claim anyways. That's a horrible thing to pass it pass it on to the next one. But if anything, whatever, it's a curse. It happened. But anyhow, congratulations to Floor, to her husband, to the whole family. Uh... I, I bring, mean, I'm, bring another I'm, I'm, star I'm, into the world. Exactly, exactly. And let's keep that conveyor belt going because we need all the talent that we can get our <laughs> hands on. So, when, when, you know what I mean? Just don't, don't stop at two. Just keep going. Like, you know, if you, you guys got you, you guys got great genes, we need more people in this world with great genes. We, we, we need to improve humanity as a whole. And I feel like uh, the, the kids that that, that couple is going to have, gonna outside become, of being great musicians, they could probably be, be great at it. Yeah, like, they could be great at any any fucking thing that they put their minds into. And I think they, and I know, I don't think, I know they're going to have uh, the parents' support for whatever it is that they want to do, music or otherwise. And uh, just, just share your your genes with this world in a world that is really lacking uh, on, on so many different levels when it comes to humanity, humanity is lacking on so many different levels. Uh, you know, the scholars you bring into this world, we can use, we can use all, all the baby them. floors that we could, that we could get <laughs> yeah. all the baby floors we, that we can get. Congratulations. Yeah. Congratulations. I, that was definitely one of the highlights of the week as far as uh, news is concerned and coming off of, the fact that she beat cancer, I mean, like seriously, I I couldn't be happier for for the family, for them. Uh, it's really outstanding. I mean, you're going through a roller coaster of emotions, discovering that you have cancer, going going through that, not knowing what the future holds, um, then beating cancer, getting over that hump, um, then getting pregnant, second child. You know, I couldn't wish better on anybody There's else. Nowhere to go but up now. Just keep doing it. Just do you. Oh, and she released a solo record too. Yeah. Man, she's been fucking busy. How the fuck you have time f to go through chemo, you know, beat the shit out of cancer, put it in a choke lock, you know, like fucking and tap off that album. shit. Make an album, make a baby. I figure the baby probably is the one that takes the least amount of work. I was going to say it's like the easiest yeah, part. Yeah, that one was probably between takes. So anyhow, like, just fucking keep doing you. You just, or each other, whatever. But just... <laughs> Keep doing it. <laughs> Just keep fucking doing it. I love it. Must m Much love. Much love, yeah. Much love. And on that lovely note, we're going to end this video. And uh, we'll see you all next week. And let's see what the, what the world of metal has in store for us. Yeah. I'm surprised there was no stories about falling in reverse this week. I know. I feel like... It's a weekly basis. That just... Well, there was a little bit of a story about falling in reverse. Oh, what happened? Uh, okay, so there is now... A a M Shadows from uh, Avenged Sevenfold um, agrees with... Uh, R R double R double R, oh, double R. and in terms of uh, some of the criticism that he gets and how he fights the criticism, uh, but it's M Shadows from Avenged Sevenfold, whatever that is worth. By the way, they they announced a tour. Oh, good for them. They announced a North American tour, and guess this: the North American tour. I don't know how many dates it has, but ninety percent of the dates are Canadian. I've never seen that before in my life. There's like Saskatoon, Regina. 
I think they booked Regina because they thought it was misspelled. But anyways, there's Saskatoon, there's Regina, there's, uh, I, I don't know, Winnipeg, Calgary, Ottawa, Ottawa, Montreal, Quebec. Who the fuck goes to Ottawa? There's no Toronto. What the like, fuck? Like 90% how you, how of you the to, dates... How do you go to Ottawa, but you're not going to come to Toronto? <laughs> but 90% of the dates are Canadian, and there's no Toronto. So the biggest city in Canada, it's not on the tour, but 90% of the dates are Canadian. I've never seen a band like... like a Tippy Seven tour Fold. around Toronto. No, I'm, I'm, I was going to say, I've never seen a band the size of Avenged Sevenfold book a North American tour where the majority of the dates is are North in America. Canada... No, but are in Canada. Normally, the majority of the dates are in the U.S. with a few Canadian ones. This is this is almost like a Canadian tour with a few U.S. dates. It's not a but Canadian still, tour without no Toronto. Toronto. Come on, no Toronto. How are you gonna tippy tour? Who the fuck lives in Ottawa? I swear it's a ghost town. Like they have no strip joints, and that's what makes them bad. You have to go to Hull. <laughs> you have to cross that bridge, go over the river, if you want to see some uh, some pasties. <laughs> Ottawa, man. This, Ottawa is so this, boring. The nation's capital. It's so boring. So fucking boring. Like, uh, uh, like, I'm not saying Toronto should be. I the thought we were gonna end this video on a good note. No, but <laughs> fu fuck Ottawa. What the hell? It's such. A, it's so boring. Like, I, I remember I had to go there for like a school trip, but we went to we went to Montreal. Also, we only spent like three hours in Montreal, and I gotta say, the three hours in Montreal were ten times better than the three days we spent in Ottawa. There's only one good thing about Ottawa: Beaver Tales. But I can have that here. Ah, it's not the same. It, it is, because the same stand. <laughs> it's the same beaver tail stand. All right, beaver tails. The only they got, they got those shits in uh, Wonderland. Do they now? Yeah. They Back got, in the day, it was just funnel cake. Eh, a funnel cake is better than beaver tails, in my opinion. That is true. That is true. Uh, you know, when I told your mother about beaver tails, she actually thought it was like... A beaver's tail, yeah. Yeah, like they killed the beaver and they cooked the tail. That's I'm like Canadian shit ever, I was like, though. that probably tastes awful. I mean, the, 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 the beaver's tail looks really fucking hard. Yeah. It doesn't look like something that you can make a dessert out of it, but anyhow. They got beaver jerky, probably. Uh, well, any meat you can jerk. <laughs> and on that note... <laughs> on that note, we'll be back next week. See ya.